diplomatic approach. Let's speak to someone now who does not uh, want the Prime Minister to soften his stance. Sir Ian Duncan Smith joining us, former leader of the Conservative Party. Sir Ian, thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, a challenge rather than a threat, you wouldn't necessarily agree with that, I think. Uh, well, I, he himself said uh, during the summer and also in conversations uh, that he considered uh, the Chinese uh, Communist Party government uh, with China to um, present a systematic, a systematic threat, uh, sorry, systemic threat to uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, and that was his clear position, uh, as well as being a threat across a range of areas, which is what he said in this interview. And my concern really is that he's now changed us. He even changed it, apparently, in the course of the interview uh, with Politico earlier on, where he started by saying a systemic threat and then changed it to a systemic uh, a competitor or a systemic uh, challenge. And I think the problem is that if they are a systemic threat, which he clearly must have believed, uh, then we need to adjust the um, review that took place, the integrated review, which has them uh, not as a threat, uh, but as a competitor. Uh, Russia is a threat, China is not. Yet many in America, and the American government thinks uh, that uh, China now represents a greater global threat mm. uh, to the United States uh, than Russia does. And I can see why, because of the capacity, their economy, their power, all of those things are now on an unrivaled scale. And I think, therefore, the idea that we're in line with the rest of the five eyes, that's uh, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, United States, and ourselves, uh, not for the first time. We are dragging our feet on this one. They all see China as a threat. We're the only one that doesn't really say that. Right. However, do you think it's uh, the case that maybe the mood music has changed in Bali, particularly after that three-hour meeting that President Biden had with Xi Jinping, where perhaps there's been something of a rapprochement, and, and Rishi Sunak quite rightly is picking up on that? No, I don't think there is any change at all. You only have to look at what was actually uh, said by President Xi, who gave Biden a very clear warning that uh, he didn't want any interference uh, from the Americans or anybody else in what he considered internal affairs of theirs over Taiwan. And we know that the Chinese government has threatened to invade Taiwan if they don't agree <clears throat> to become part of China. Uh, now, they are a democratic government. Uh, under the rule of law in Taiwan, but they face daily threats. They face exercises now in and around their seas. They face uh, missile threats all the time by the Chinese government. This is a man, uh, President Xi, who has already occupied the South China Seas against international law. He's militarizing the area. He's trashed the British Sino uh, Chinese, Sino British agreement on Hong Kong and is arresting peaceful Hong Kong. Uh, democracy campaigners. He's committing genocide in uh, Xinjiang with the Uyghur, uh, sterilizing the women, forcing the men into slave labor and the children to force uh, re-education camps. He's already put most of the Tibetan men into uh, forced labor camps as well. All of this goes on in China and outside China. Yeah. And they pose a distinct and absolutely real threat to everybody in the area of Southeast Asia, but also to our interests Yes. and to those of the United States. So we need to get this right. Calling them a challenge or a competitor is an absurd euphemism. Yeah, and of course, uh, the, the human rights uh, issue uh, uppermost for many at G20. However, we understand there are uh, efforts uh, to, to actually get the meeting and an interview uh, with uh, Xi Jinping for, for Rishi Sunak, where these points will be made. However, looking at the bigger geopolitical picture. Is it the case that perhaps we need China on our side, maybe swallowing some of the less palatable uh, aspects of that because of Russia? And if we can actually move them away from Russia, that's going to be a gain for us. Well, that's not going to happen. And China <clears throat> already has had plenty of opportunity to, as you say, move away from Russia. But they haven't. What they've actually done is public defended Russia's right to protect its own territory mm. and the territory that they occupy. So Russia is occupying territory owned by Ukraine as part of Ukraine. Uh, and China has defended their right, therefore, to defend that. That doesn't sound to me like they're going to be moving against Russia at any time soon. And they failed and completely refused to condemn Russia for this invasion. <clears throat> the nearest they've come to this is to call for a ceasefire. But a ceasefire 
on grounds that allow Russia to stay where they are uh, is actually a defense of Russia. Uh, it's not uh, a defense of uh, democracy, freedom, and your territorial rights. So the, the trouble with the West, and I think the, the present UK government may be about to commit this grave error, which is to deal with people on the basis of you hope and wish they are, rather than the reality of who they are. China under President Xi has swung into a much more authoritarian mode, is brutal at home, threatening abroad, and refuses to obey any of the existing rules on trade, and, and therefore debauches that. We are buying slave-made goods from China today. The cotton in Xinjiang, 40% of the world's cotton produced in many parts of that area with slave labor and products too. And yet nothing is done to force companies uh, to declare properly uh, their, uh, their chains, their supply chains. So all of this, we are dragging our feet here in the UK. And I simply want to say, we learned a very hard lesson in the 1930s that if you go on appeasing states like uh, like China's a dictatorial Nazi German regime, we gave in to them on their, their territorial demands. We gave in them into them in terms of their uh, failures in, and their abuses on the uh, market. And what did we end up with? We ended up with a global war of 60 million died. I, I simply don't want to end there. So what I want to do is for us to be realistic about China. I do not want us to go kowtowing to China in the hope that they do nice, easy right. trade deals with us. We have okay. to be forceful with them. We shall see what emerges in Bali in the next 24 hours. We understand the efforts underway to uh, get that meeting. We'll see if it is appeasement or not. So Ian Duncan-Smith, thanks for joining us there. Uh